filling is stay for the same sample grown at 800 Kelvin. We have almost one nanometer, and after the annealing, we obtain around six nanometers. So this we we have an increase of the crystalline, we can say, and this is corroborated by the characteristic Raman frequency that we we have this uh, sample before the annealing. And this is the sample after the annealing. We have an increase of the the size. This this increase of the peak uh, that means that they increase the size of the quantum dots or the Germanium quantum dots or cluster. So with this, we can conclusion with uh, the amorphous Germanium oxide nanofilms contain Germanium nano cluster with the sizes around six nanometers and were produced by combining a process of magnetron sputtering and post annealing stage. These films have an oxygen concentration around 10% um, atomic, and also these, these films result electrically insulated. The fields run at temperature about 300 Kelvin were anti conductivity, and the post growth annealing stage applies to the films case the germanium cluster formation in the germanium oxide films. The measured electrode concentration was three per 10 as power 19, and the refracting index increased up to 3.5 by the process annealing state. Uh, the post ground annealing applied to these films reduced the optical transmitter, and the optical band gas was 1.2 electron volts. Then this was corroborated by photoluminescence measurements. So, in the Raman scattered measurements confirm the presence of the germanium crystal embedded in an amorphous uh, germanium oxide films. Uh, after the annealing state within the initial amorphous phase. And what continued to this is to develop the pin type solar cell structure. We already have the intermediate band, the amorphous matrix, and or germanium oxide amorphous matrix and the germanium quantum dots embedded. In. So the, the in the future we have to develop this pin type solar cell. And uh, well, we want to acknowledge to the master Miguel Galvan and Norma Gonzalez for their technical assistance in the film deposition, but sputtering at the Centro de Investigaciones y de Estudios Avanzados de Politico Nacional. Some reference, and thank you for your attention. This is the team work, the Dr. Ramon Peña Sierra and Dr. Viacheslav Elogia, and Maestro Daniel Ortiz, and, and me, Javier Sotelo. Thank you very much, Javier. Um, anyone have I, a question? I don't know if I am. Okay, yes. Does anyone have a question? If you have any question after we, you can contact me or with my my co-workers. OK, thank you, Araceli. Hi, Javier, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, thank um, you. Can you elaborate a little bit more uh, in the pin type solar cell? Uh, seems to be quite a quite simple device. Uh, according to your to your previous slide. Can you tell us a little bit more, please? Yes, uh, we're going to hear. This is this is a pin size solar cells that have been development, but they use super lattice uh, uh, of the materials. This is 20 layers. But in our case, we want to create a pin type, but just one layer and exactly like this just one layer of the materials is with just one process then well the uh, sputtering the creator 
the, the films and after the annealing state. Uh, and that's it, just sounds uh, really um, easy. No, it, it isn't, but is um, we can obtain this pin type with a two process like the others. Yes, thank you. So that could be a, a, an advantage, no, in, in terms of the preparation of the solar cell yes. uh, when comparing with the another type of many layer solar cells. Yeah. Uh, OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. OK, um, we have time for one more question. Does anyone? OK, um, Javier, I, I have a question with this one. Yes. Um, Regarding topological insulators, they 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 found in, in in this kind of materials um, that that new phenomenon. So, are you expecting um, with this um, small layer and this one layer? Are you expecting some of these issues, new issues, to to be in your material or in your um, at last your device yes um, we hope to obtain a higher um, higher efficiency by the process and well we obtain an anti-conductivity film so we can uh, just um, deposit the bit time after this uh, well, in a, in a substrate we have in a corning, in a corning glass, but uh, yeah, there are a lot of um, advantage of this, uh, the, the process, because uh, another uh, examples like this use higher temperature than, than us, I mean, for silicon is higher than 1000 celsius degree and like this to create this these quantum dots in an amorphous matrix but we we can create this these uh, quantum dots with um, lower temperature i mean 500 celsius degree so this is another advantage to use a uh, one process mm -hmm. Oh, less less temperature to use it, and just one layer. And another is the the quantum dot size. So this is very important because the size depend of the band gap of the materials. So to obtain these these quantum dots, you use a higher temperature, in in this case, and the silicon, and also germanium. We obtained. Uh, this cluster with less temperature because you use the hydrogen flu in the annealing state because this uh, hydrogen reduces the germanium the germanium oxide so for this reason we obtain less uh, temperature or, or use layer temperature okay thank you very much um javier yeah you're welcome okay our um Next talk is by Patricia Lopez Cárdenas. Yes. Uh, thank you. And um, it is entitled A uh, Resampling Approach for the Database Optimization of Nanosensors. Please, Patricia. Yes, I am comparing yes. my presentation. Yes. yes, there you are. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi everyone, I am Patricia Guadalupe Lopez Cárdenas, a PhD student at ITESO in Jalisco. My purpose today is to talk about our study and title, a resampling approach for database optimization nanosensor. 
Okay. The topics of my presentation are first, a brief introduction and motivation. Second, the extension results and discussion. Third, and finally, to share our conclusion, our perspectives. The aim of this work is twofold. First, we illustrate the computationally intensive procedure of bootstrapping, a distribution-free technique to obtain confidence intervals of several estimates that summarize a sensor performance. Second, we show the bootstrap's strength of interval estimation, giving more precise results without parametric assumptions. For this purpose, we will use data obtained with self-supported nanoware arise sensors using cyclic voltammetry, an electrochemical method that measures the electron transference by oxidation reduction reactions under the application of linearly ramped potential. We test the, the sensor response with five different concentrations of hydrogen peroxide in millimoles. Also, we use two types of metals for the sensors, nickel and gold. Furthermore, we apply two different geometries, nanowares and planar. Besides the planar geometry, for comparison because represents the more extreme case of the non-nanostructure sensor. The bootstraps belongs to class of statisticals to call resemblance methods. These methods share three basic steps. Firstly, the bootstrap rapidly resembled with or without replacement from a data set. On the other hand, computing a statistic from the new resample, a subset of the original. We can also compute the summary status of the bootstrap samples, such a percentile confidence intervals. The resampling methods are often more straightforward and accurate than the asymptotic approximation methods and require fewer assumptions. In this work, we use the bootstrap to obtain accurate estimate, like interval estimations with lineal regression. Data acquisition. We start with briefly description the sensor, the cyclic voltammetry, data optation, and the transformation. In the top of the figure one, in the section A, we show the experimental setup for the fabrication of the sensor using restrictive nanopore membranes of polyester by the electric deposition of gold and nickel jones. Here in the section B, in the center of the figure one, as well as the data acquisition process using cyclic voltammetry, transformed to current density in density um, Current density uh, was uh, gating about the division of the current intensity by the area of the sensor. Moreover, in the lower of this figure, we can also show representative cyclic voltammetry form the gold nanoware sensor. We are interested in the sensitivity of the sensor. It is the slope 
opera of the linear regression, which we define as the change in the current density by the unique increase of hydrogen peroxide concentration with dimensions million pairs per millimoles times squared centimeters because the sensitivity critical depends of the potential applied we identify the potential capital potential capital via asterisk in which is maximized in the extension c to be showed this process as follows in the reduction peak region of the cycle voltammetry, approximately from minus 0 0.5 volts to 0 volts. We interpolate the current density for each 8P potential with a step size of 0 0.0005 five volts. Hence, for each potential, sub A and uh, we obtain five, five pairs of current density and concentration and estimate uh, here I can and estimate the sensitivity of the sensor with the slope of the linear regression beta in the equation current density is equal to intercept and beta times concentration hydrogen petro concentration moreover in needs it is important to know the potential at which the sensitivity is maximized in the Argumax beta. We call them B asterisk, capital B asterisk. In, the, in this uh, figure, we can show the comparate the interval estimation with the uh, two methods in this plot the bootstrapping for linear regression versus shade of asymptotic approximation methods. The idea of the bootstrap is to simulate the sample distribution variations, which arise when we repeatedly draw samples from a population by resampling from the original sample. The resulting variation is an approximation of the variation of the sampling distribution. The resulting variation summarized with the lower and upper 95% percentile. Here in the figure two, we have two sensors, four sensors, two for nickel, nanowares and planner or two four gold nanowares and planner and we can see the in the upper the nickel nanoware and nickel planner and in the lower the gold sensors for all of this plot we use 250 resample with replacement to illustrate how to compute the percentile confidence intervals for linear regression, let's uh, suppose we have a sample of size n of order pi pairs. 250 samples for each sensor with five order pairs of bivariate observations. We illustrate how to compute that percentile confidence interval for linear variations. Let's all suppose we have a sample of the capital X of size N of order base X sub B and Y sub A of B variables of observation. Let the capital X sub by asterisk B the B fits resample of the capital 
X and X asterisk and Y exclude by asterisk and bivariate observation from the capital X asterisk. We sample the capital X asterisk from the capital X with replacement. That is, we allow the pair to appear more than once or no. We want, uh, then we compute the statistic of interest from the and twice, uh, XP and twice, for example, sample the linear regression slope and store the VT result. We repeat this process capital B, V times and the 95% confidence intervals can be obtained with the 0 0.025 and 0 0.975 quantiles of the bootstrap sample to size capital B. And here also it shows the regression lines computed with 253 samples from the original data for both classes, sensors, nanowares and planner, and two different metals, nickel and gold. The shade, this shade, shaded areas show the 95% confidence intervals computed with an asymptotic approximation based on the test statistic with the expression of the following equation. We are comparing both uh, results in the next table. In the, with the equation, the 95% confident intervals of sensitive or nickel nanoware. Here with the bootstrap, we can see this is the interval with the planner, uh, with the nanoware, nickel, nickel nanoware. But in the asymptotical approximation method, the interval is one. 0.79 to 4.25 is different the results that we obtained with on the, the both methods and we compare the result of the asymptotical method with the bootstrap results main file the nickel planner is minus zero 0 0.001 to 0 0.002. Here in the bootstrap, we have an is it interval estimation with 0 0.004 and 0 0.001. And this, in this case, we have all the results without include zero it can be significant but in the plan in the planar nano in the planar nickel with asymptotical approximation metal they include the zero this it means that is not significant sensitive furthermore the more dramatic the gold planar see compare with the this um, uh, interval, we can note very resultant in bootstrapping. Besides, point an interval estimate for beta sensitivity, limited of detections, and limited of quantification, all of them we can uh, get the interval um, estimation. And we have 95% for sensitivity, load, and lock. In this case, we can stress as follows the estimates of load and lock for nanoware sensor are lower, 
so that a smaller quantity of hydrogen peroxide can be quantified with high degree of confidence. Moreover, because the 95% confidence intervals of the nanoware sensor are narrower than the confidence interval of planet sensor, their load, load and log estimates are more accurate. Conclusion. The class of high sensitive and selective non-enzymatic sensor treated here crucially depends on the working condition of the electrochemical response. This is because the erection potential with the electrochemical metals exploit can be different for different substances. That means that if the sensitive potential is not correctly settled, the, the simultaneous oxidation, oxidation or other substances can interfere with the measurements. Therefore, for sensitivity and selectivity, very estimation methods are necessary to confidently separate the signal from the noise coming from interfering substance when the sensor is developed and calibrated whenever possible. Where he, we illustrate the use of distribution-free methods like the non-parametric bootstrap for point and interval estimation with the statistical literature highly recommends as a complement or an alternative for the more used asymptotic approximation methods like the test the T test. We also show how to the 95% of confident interval could give additional information for assign the reliability and precision of point estimates. Information which can and should be used for calibration. For example, Although the point estimates for the limit of detection log and limit of quantification log in the gold nanoware sensor are lower than those of the corresponding planar sensor, their 95% confidence interval overlaps, which suggests no difference. Where we um, want to give the authors thanks Quetzihal, Conacyt, and Iteso for scholarship and support. And also the authors thanks Sofia Vilches, Susana Martinez for helping in recuperation and Eliazar Benitez for his constant support. Thank you very much for your attention. Do you have any question? Thank you very much, uh, Patricia, for your talk. I think we have um, time for just one question, uh, please. Yes. Everyone. Is there any question? Okay, Patricia. So we, um, which which one of these sensors is more accurate at the end of the, the this bootstrap? Here in, in the nanoware, uh, gold nanoware is the the better. In this in this uh, studies, we get that it was the better. The better. Okay. okay more accurate. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice. Thank you. Um, okay, and our last talk is from Jorge Cruz Gomez. I mean, it's entitled Improvement, the Optical Properties of the P3HT PC70BM film using cadmium selenide, uh, cadmium selenide quantum dots. Please, um, Jorge. We cannot see your um, your presentation, and neither we do listen to you.
um, your your microphone is is closed. No, we cannot see your presentation, Jorge. Hi, Jorge. You already have permission to to share your your screen, and also to use your microphone. Okay, this oh, microphone is okay, but. Uh, Okay, we see a green um, screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you suppose I am I sharing? Um, we don't don't see your um, screen. We just see a green screen. We don't see the presentation. Maybe if you try um, again. Okay, could you see it? Yes, there you are. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Okay, my name is Jorge Cruz. I'm, I'm going to talk about this, this project. The name of the project is, is Improvement. The optical properties of the P3HT PC 70 bm film using carbon selenide quantum dots. Uh, I am from the Querétaro University. And I am continuing with the presentation. Uh, as a first part, I want, I want to talk about the quantum dots. Quantum dots are materials where, where, with specific properties uh, when they have a size. Uh, behind the uh, vortex on radius for the cadmium selenide the vortex on radius is, is 5.7 nanometers so the limit for the bulk and quantum dot materials is uh, 11.4 nanometers in diameter uh, and in this specific point we have the change between bulk properties and quantum dot properties. In the figure, you, we can see the, the some properties, the increase in band gap with decrease in, in size and the appearing of discrete energy levels between band, uh, between both bands, conductive and balanced band. Okay, uh, the properties in quantum dots are important for us as are intense luminescence, narrow and symmetrical emission, high stability in the presence of photo and chemo radiation, adjustably bank up according to their size, possibility of generating multiple excitons with a photon. Uh, uh, the proper the purpose is use the these materials in, a, in an organic solar cell. The organic solar cells uh, have the different structure, this Feature is for an, an inverted structure. In this uh, in this structure, we 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 get the electrons in the TCO and the holes in the metal. The structure is composed by a TCO. Normally, is a commercial material, a FTO or ETO. Next, uh, we have the ETL. Layer, the ET layer is an electron transport layer, is a, normally a semiconductor type N, and this uh, is usually we, we can uh, collocate D in this position uh, zinc oxide, titanium oxide, cadmium, cadmium sulfide, or the um, polymer as a PPN. Uh, the active layer is the, the best the best layer, the most more important. In this layer, the photo uh, this the photo photoconductive effect is take off 
in this in this case we we change the sun radiation by uh, electrical electrical potential that is we can use and next is the whole transport layer the whole transport layer is a p p material a p semiconductor material and last we we have the metal as a contact usually gold uh, silver or aluminum okay the quantum dots uh, synthesis is carried out on nitrogen atmosphere we we, we need two precursors the one precursor is for selenium. Selenium is, we use selenium powder. is dispersed in octadecine amine, dioctyl phosphine, and the tetradecyl phosphine acid. Uh, this is stirring by one hour at 150 Celsius degree. And the other precursor is for cadmium, is cadmium oxide, enoleic acid, and octadecine is stirring by one hour at 180 Celsius degree. Uh, for the synthesis, we, we inject the cadmium, the selenium, selenium dispersion inside the cadmium oxide dispersion at the specific temperature. In this case, we use three temperatures, 210, 240, uh, 280 Celsius degree uh, for the three different synthesis. Uh, in this temperature, we we made the synthesis uh, for five minutes, and then call the all the synthesis. And when we get a 60 Celsius degree, we put the nitrogen atmosphere, and uh, we made a wash using a centrifugate. We centrifugate the um, repeated repeating washes with acetone and methanol. Okay, the final quantum dots uh, have the uh, ligand. In this case, the ligand is triphyl phosphine. Triphyl phosphine is good ligand for the synthesis, but no, it's a good ligand for the cells. So we need to change the, this ligand. We change the triphyl phosphine by pyridine. Pyridine has better electrical properties uh, this pro this uh, change exchange of ligand, we need to uh, steer the sample to 12 hours in a bat, in, a, in an oil bat, at 65 Celsius degrees in solution 8 to 2 in volume, exchange pyridine uh, with a concentration of 40 milligrams per milliliter of this solution. Then uh, we start to steer in again. 24 hours at room temperature. Finally, we uh, made the wash again using uh, exchange for make the washes in a centrifugate. And finally, we try the temp uh, temperature at room temperature. And in the this in this this powder, this quantum dust powder, uh, we use to make a solution. This solution is 30 milligrams per, per milliliter in a solvent, uh, in a mixed solvent of four to one, and chlorobenzene and pyridine. Uh, and before using, we need to steer overnight. Okay, uh, results we we mean we measure the the solutions uh, in toluene of these quantum dots, we obtain a spectrum for the UVB spectrums for the three samples. It is evident that the first, the, the first uh, band for the three is, is moved according to the wavelength. Uh, the, the sample at 200, 280 was the, the bigger in size and the, the more displaced to the to the red in the UVBs, and the smaller was the sample at this lower temperature, 210, and in the lower is a
Sorry, uh, Jorge, we cannot hear you. Jorge, um, we lost your voice. Maybe he lost connection. Jorge, are you there? Okay. Um. Oops. Should we wait for him? Maybe he lost his connection. Yes, maybe maybe we can give him two minutes or some. Okay. Yes. Oh. Is any co-co-co-author with uh, with Jorge here? Aruna, David, Rosu, Chetiar, or Francisco Javier de Mur. Um, Jose Santos Cruz. No, I think. Sandra, Andrea Mayen y Adrián Sosa Domínguez. They are not, none of them are here. No. Okay, I think he lost 
um, the connection on, at the end. Yes. No bad. Okay, well, it is almost um, two o'clock. We don't know if, if he um, can reconnect now. So, um, I don't see him there. No, he's no longer connected. Yep. Well, um, thank you very much for um, having you here in this um, CCE 2021 and for um, being um, participating here. Thank you very much to the presenters. Um, those were um, very interesting works. And thank you very much and for everyone who was um, listening all across the, the symposium. Thank you very much for you, for all of them. Thank you, Patricia. It was thank nice you. meeting you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Paola, for your assistance. Thank you. Thank you. you. Ara. <laughs> Dr. Ara. <laughs> also for Muchas the gracias. <laughs> okay. Bueno, I, pues, it's two o'clock. I think uh, yes. the last presenter is not able. Back. Yes. Okay. Okay. So thank What you, everyone. Please you? still connected. And see you soon. See you. Thank you very much to all. Thank you, Elizabeth Platelpa. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. See you. See you.